Okay, hi everybody, welcome. Um, as Camille was saying, I'm one of the course directors uh, with my colleague, and, and I'll just through, with my colleague Endo Adoud here, both of us have been working on the course for, well, I've been there for 10 years and Endo's been there for maybe 12. So uh, between us, we've quite a good bit of experience. Our backgrounds are, you can see Endo's background is in polymer technology. So he brings a great wealth of experience in like understanding materials and all that. And my background is in industrial design and we both have masters from Bournemouth in end as being an engineering product design and mine in computer aided product design. So between us, we have quite a useful skill set for um, delivering the course. And because we have been on the course for about 22 years between us, we've gained a large amount of knowledge of working with medical device companies over that time. So, um, yeah, we feel like we're, we're doing an OK job anyway. Um, so to talk about the course, I'll kick off. I'll just kick off with a little overview of what a year looks like for our, for our students. So this is the calendar for this year. Now, you don't need to look into too long, but it's basically the year is divided into three trimesters. So you start off in September and it is basically a one year master's with three trimesters. The first two trimesters, we run two big studio projects um, and them studio projects tend to be with outside partners, be it um, a medical device company such as Hollister or Stryker or this year it was uh, Teleflex is another one uh, or big institutions like uh, RCSI. And these are large studio projects where uh, the students um, are given live briefs and, and work on and, and work with the companies. Uh, the final trimester, um, shall we call it, uh, is over the summer, and that's when the students complete their capstone project. So the capstone project will be again with another company and you spend the summer working. It's usually the thesis project. People tend to know it is. A typical week for a student in the master's looks something like this. Um, Mondays and Fridays are generally given over to lectures. Um, Tuesdays and Thursdays are generally given over to maybe additional skills teaching, but uh, self-directed studio work, uh, tutorials, time for us to catch up with the students. And then Wednesdays, we tend to leave the students alone. We, we tend to call that a self-directed day where the students are welcome to come into college, but also work from home or figure out any of the other bits of uh, life at men that they might need to do during the week. The course is quite intensive and we expect students to be working five days a week on the course. Um, but we do understand people need to also complete tasks in their daily lives. So we, we try to keep Wednesdays free to allow that to happen. Um, you can see the dark green ones there. We try to have our company presentations usually on a Monday or a Thursday afternoon. Now, all that, of course, is you have to be slightly adaptable uh, when we're working with companies because we're, we're just a university and we're student, uh, and uh, the companies often have to quickly change because of work commitments and stuff. So we, we are usually adaptable, but we try to keep as, 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 as it runs as such. Um, so, I guess to talk a little bit about medical devices, we divide, we, uh, oh, I just looked at someone in there. Someone. We, everyone thinks that when they think of medical device design, they think of oh, all the engineering, all the bits and pieces that go with it and the lasers and everything. But really what we are interested in is the human focused element of medical device design. So we are concerned about how the human will interact and use that device. And mo mostly we're interested in how they might not misuse the, the device. So the biggest problem uh, that the FDA and other regulators have identified about medical device design or medical devices is that over the last number of years, companies such as Stryker and Medtronic and whoever have become incredibly good at de-risking their products uh, from a manufacturing point of view or from an engineering point of view. So the devices are excellent. They're well built. They, they don't fall apart. Uh, um, but inherently, medical devices are designed to 
do damage a lot of the time if you're in surgery uh, because you have to cut you open or do something like that. Uh, so the, what the biggest problem that they started realizing was surgeons would take on these devices and it wouldn't work as expected. And the, the reality of that is the device worked fine. It was just an affordance or it was designed in a way that the, the surgeon wasn't expecting it to be used. And that would become a misuse. And that misuse could lead to damage or in, in some cases fatal uh, results. So that's where we work in or we work on reducing the human error. We also get to design the objects and think about what they look like and everything, but it's the human interaction and, and, and preventing the, the human from misusing the device. I keep clicking on the thing. So why is a medical device course in an art and design college? It's it's It seems mad, right? But ultimately we're part of the product design department. And if you know product design or industrial design in the past, as we called it, it's, it's people who are in charge of how humans we're the people who are being tasked with designing objects and how the interaction of that object with the human and medical devices are no different. So that's why we're based in, in the um, NCAD design college. We're a studio based learning environment. So uh, we feel that this is the best way to learn um, because we aim to bring a student cohort from a, a variety of backgrounds and when you bring student cohort from a variety of backgrounds be it product design engineering art architecture science everyone has got a super skill or a, a superpower that will will help the rest of the class to uh, to to advance and by putting everyone together in a studio you can help each other to become better designers. We, of course, will give you loads of assistant skills, teaching uh, experience and opportunities. But by sitting beside each other, you can learn from each other. And that's why a studio based peer learning is super important. And ultimately, it, it, it treat it starts to treat and prepare you for the real world. Like when you go out to an into a company, um, of course, a certain amount you'll be working from home. But like when you're in the office, you're sitting beside your colleagues and that ability to be able to work beside and, and, and learn from each other is just recreated in a studio learning environment. Um, just a quick, the I mean, there's more than this, um, but we're an outward facing course. All our projects are with companies. Uh, we don't just come up with briefs for the sake of it. So every project we do, be it the long or the short one. So, um, even our short one week projects, they're usually conducted with hospitals such as the Matter and St. James's. So every project we do is on real pro real life problems, industry facing, talking to the people and understanding like what's going on at the moment. So we we as a course have developed over the last number of 15 years because we have developed with the industry as it goes on. And, and um, but so in oh yeah what am i talking about here <laughs> i'll find out contextual inquiry so how do we start usually we uh, uh, ask the students to try and understand the understand the problem so the company comes to us and they have a brief they're like oh we have this device it's doing well but we feel like the surgeons aren't you know happy with it uh could you maybe think about changing it in some way and we're like oh great great that's wonderful you have a device what do we want to do? Well, first thing we is we go, well, let's see if we can see how the surgeons are using it. Now, you can ask the surgeon how they're using it. And that's great. They'll tell you that they're using it the way they were told they were using it or the way they were taught to use it. But the reality is they're never actually using it the way they think they're using it. So we do we conduct contextual inquiry, which means heading out to the hospitals or the surgeries if we can get into them and observe the surgeons and see what they're actually doing. People always say they're doing one thing and do another. And so, and usually it's when they're doing the other, that's where there's an opportunity to um, intervene. Uh, we, we often, so what we do is we, after we've kind of done our observations, we will do empathizing and by how we empathize is we do a lot of role playing. We'll build up uh, scenarios, try to re-perform, re produce a surgical kind of environment where the device is going to be used. In this case, we were looking at a device that was 
um, going to be used in the brain, but the only ac the access point for the brain is actually in your leg. So, <laughs> which makes, which might sound a bit strange. So you can see here, the students printed out a human um, on the laser and built a, uh, put in a tube that represented the artery going to the brain or their vein, can't remember which one now, and they're inserting the device. And they're trying to get, the, what they're doing here is they're trying to understand all the steps that were required because usually a device that's going to the brain requires a number of catheters, one inserted inside, another inserted inside, another, and each one has a function. And they all have to be used in a sequence. So th this is what the students are doing. They're recreating it by role-playing it. Uh, once they, we would do that, we do a thing called mapping. So we do this mapping through a thing called task analysis. So that's where we take the surgery or the procedure and we break it down into its very, uh, very uh, step by step. And we look at each step and we try and analyze what's going on and how we do that. We analyze it by, um, breaking it down, looking at the action of this of the person we look at their the mental models that they have such as their perception what are they perceiving what is their cognition what is the environment doing what are the rest of the stakeholders doing around them at that time and as as we map it um we 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 can use you know often we use a general mapping or task detail task analysis like so uh, we identify pain points and when you identify a pain point such as I don't know um, uh, the surgeon is holding the object and while they press the button the, they cause a lot of pain on their finger because they're holding it for too long well that's an insight and that that insight allows you to an opportunity to redesign the object so if you have identified uh, a, a physical pain point or a kind of an obstruction or or, or uh, what shall we call a sticky moment, which is preventing the procedure going clearly, uh, that gives you an opportunity to just redesign uh, the object. So uh, pain points and insights. This is actually kind of a nice little story here. Uh, the rotunda, some of you might recognize it and some of you probably don't, but it's a, a maternity hospital. And this was a final pro. I'm not going to talk too much about the projects as I can't generally, but it, it was an interesting one about how the student using contextual inquiry by this Mark, a man, shall we say, uh, was tasked with trying to understand uh, the waste issue with the rotunda. So, you know, he, he was like, oh, how am I going to find out the information? We were just like, well, off you go, go down there and get in there and find out. So Mark went down there and he sat down and he be, pretended to be a pregnant lady. He put a pillow up his tummy and uh, he sat in the queues with the women and he filled out all the forms and he went through all the things that they did. And what he realized is that there's a large amount of urine waste uh, that is generated on a daily visit to the, to the rotunda. And that waste has to be destroyed. And that is very heavy. Urine is water and water is heavy uh, and yeah, it has to be destroyed and that has a large cost. And he that was his insight. It was like large amount of the rotunda's waste is basically just waste water. Uh, and the project developed from there. The insight, that was the insight that started off the project. So you, you never know where your insights are going to come from, but the contextual inquiry is super important. You have to get out there. Otherwise, you'll be just sitting there in the, in the classroom or in the office going, well, the rotunda have a lot of expensive waste. Probably, uh, you know, we will just, um, I don't know, uh, make them use less. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, you, you can't come up with an answer when, when you're sitting at your desk. You have to get out. Um, once you've developed your insights, we ask the students to develop concepts and the, the, the concepts will be shown to the companies. The companies come in and review them. They choose directions get the students to, to uh, support the concepts by building prototypes. So because we're part of the product design department, the uh, students come over to the workshops and um, build out prototypes or sketch models for, for evaluating their designs. We're not really interested in high fidelity. We're more interested in uh, prototypes that will allow you to evaluate your design Will somebody pick it up in the right direction? Will someone do what you're expecting them to do with it? Uh, 
that's what we do by user testing. We get people to try them out. Um, and so by the use of body storming in this case, where they had to put on the object and walk around and see if it is. But you can see the fidelity is very low. We're really just thinking about would they hold it in that way? Would they put it on this way? Where would it fit? Would it fall down? Uh, the students have to do a certain amount of formative testing. So that's uh, kind of proving out that an element of your design works by selecting five people and setting up a protocol for the test. So this is really important. This is where medical device design differs from general uh, industrial product design, where formative testing of your, your of your designs has to be done along the way from an early stage and you have to be able to record that um, as opposed to I, I built three models and I thought this one was good. You have to build a pro testing protocol and you have to ask certain questions and you have to set up the test scenario. Um, you can see this is building out of, um, again, more role playing, more testing, but you're looking at how someone might be able to, um, how in this case, we're looking at the surgeon. So we can see here, the surgeon is um, with the red line and we're looking at the posture. So a small surgeon versus a tall surgeon and working at either side of the patient using different handle types. And really what we're trying to understand is how, how much stress is the surgeon under? So are they being put into unnatural positions? Um, are their arms in unneutral positions for long periods of time? If you are extending your arms, you don't have as much strength. So, you know, and you'll fatigue quicker. And if you're doing a long surgery, you know, you don't want to have the surgeon with their arms out for long periods of time. And we visualize it, of course. So a project structure really kind of is broken down into most company projects are about six weeks long. You get a brief briefing from the partner. You spend about about two weeks doing, well, we roughly break it down into research, concept and develop. So it could be two to two and a bit weeks for research, two to two and less than two weeks for concept and then two weeks for development. So during the research stage, each the, um, the class is broken into teams and each team researches a specific heading related to the project. That way the entire class um, can produce a big research body of work and they don't have to focus on all areas. They just have to focus on one area and then they, they, they disseminate amongst each other. Obviously, they conduct their, they do their mapping and their task analysis, uh, identify, as I said, the re insights and pain points, and they do a research presentation back to the company. Uh, develop your concepts, present three routes to the company, again, supported by sketch models and rigs uh, at the constant presentation. Mm, then they will, the, the company usually selects a route and uh, they're asked to kind of move forward with it. So the, the student will take that and then develop it further by testing, testing formative usability testing with people. Does it work the way they expect it to work? Uh, developing um, insights from that too. And then they will do have a development presentation to the company. So to break down a year in credit, credit wise and what you might be expect you will be learning, the course kind of is broken down as such. So as I said, we have three trimesters. Each trimester is a thir has 30 credits. So in the first trimester, you're introduced to research methods. That's a five credit module that's across the college. So you'll be uh, across the design school. Um, so you'll be in with other design masters and you'll get to meet the, the, the classes there. We do a five credit basic medical science a uh, module with Trinity. So that's conducted on a Friday afternoon with Trinity. Uh, so that's the, it's a lecture series that introduces you to the system, the human body system. So they take a part of the, the body and they talk about be it the, the renal system or the, you know, the skeletal system and talk about how it works. So it's really good. It gives you a good overview of like the person. We have human factors one. Uh, human factors is the term we use for ergonomics. Uh, so you might be aware of ergonomics, but human factors is the term that we uh, apply. Fundamentals of medical device design. So that's, um, oh yeah, and human factor one actually is also the RCSI project. 
so it's usually the first project of the year and um, it's where we start and introduce you to task analysis and get you off and running on that. Fundamentals of medical device design is a kind of a catch-all module that catch it, captures elements that you need. So you're taught uh, materials by in the CAD by my, computer aided design by myself. Uh, you have the history of medicine. You know, it's just kind of captures elements that you need for the course. And then we have the Design Studio Collaborative Project 1, which this year was as with Teleflex. And that's all finished up before Christmas. So you can see there's quite a lot of work there in, in the first semester. Goes very fast. You move into the second semester and we have human factors too. And that's where we take, um, we look deeper into the kind of usability testing and uh, required for uh, FDA and, and regulatory submissions and risk analysis. Um, but mostly on the usability bit, looking at the human factors. Bioinstrumentation is a core, um, a module delivered by the medical physics team in St. James's. So the, they will introduce you to the concepts of electronics for medical device design, how all the machines are generally structured and how they go together. So it's again, it's an overview of these things. So it's it's a good thing to have in your, you know, a knowledge of that. And then we uh, we have two studio collaborative projects. So this year, first one after Christmas was with Stryker and then there'll be Hollister uh, next week, I think. Uh, and then we have your capstone project over the summer design studio major project where um, you will team up with a company or an institution or, an, or a small startup and work on a, a, a brief for them and you apply your learnings of the year over the summer. Um, and then I guess, yeah, this year we have NCAD is providing a scholarship. I think the value to a national application fee. So there'll be more details to follow on that. Um, we, we just need to fully resolve the exact application about that. But also I was uh, asked to uh, let people know that for international students, the government of Ireland have an international scholarship scheme and the link is here. And I'm sure uh, Camille can uh, forward that on if anyone asks for it as well. But uh, so if you're an international scheme or national, sorry, if you're an international student hoping to come here, there, there's an application process that one can apply for there. And yeah, that's it. So my contact is valence D at staff and Enda's contact is odowd E at staff dot NCAD. If you have any questions for us, we'll be happy to send an email. Uh, we're happy to answer any emails at any stage.